2018 special call meeting to order. It's approximately 5.32 p.m. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilman Roth? Here. Councilwoman Fairclough? Here. Councilwoman Bailey? Here. Vice Mayor Shelley? Vice Mayor Shelley? Here. Mayor Porter? Here. So uh, tonight we have tab one, Mr. Manager, Mr. Turney. Yes, Mr. Mayor, there's a resolution of the City Council of the City of Homestead, Florida, approving a second amendment to the Homestead Station Development Agreement, providing for implementation and providing for an effective date. Mr. Manager. Hold on, Kate. Okay. Um, Mayor, Council, this, this is an amendment to the development agreement between the city and Axum DR Construction LLC or its permitted assignee. And Mayor, if you like, I can, I can read the memo into the record. Can everybody hear? Can everybody hear Kate? Okay, pull that mic down just a little bit, Kate, so that's better. Please. Okay, and would you like me to read the memo? Please. Okay. The city of Homestead entered into the Homestead Station Development Agreement with Axum DR Construction LLC doing business as Axiom Construction Company LLC, the developer, on June 14, 2017. The agreement sets out the terms of a public-private partnership that includes development of a public facility, parking garage, retail liner, and open public plaza, and a private facility, 10-screen movie theater, 14 bowling lanes, video arcade, food service, and restrooms. On December 20th, 2017, the Mayor and Council approved a first amendment to the development agreement, which provided for the construction of additional parking spaces, reduced the amount of the city's maximum monetary contribution toward the construction of the public facility, and authorized the city manager to administratively approve certain changes to the agreement, ground lease, and or construction contract. The city and developer now seek to further amend the agreement as summarized below. The city will convey the private facility site to the developer by special warranty deed after execution of a lease between developer and showbiz cinemas. The private facility site will be subject to a deed restriction limiting use of the private facility site to a family entertainment center use, which use includes movie theater use and a minimum of 14 bowling lanes or other use approved in writing by the city of Homestead for a period of five years after the date of issuance of a CO for the private facility. No building permit for the public facility will be issued until the detailed construction schedule of values is approved by the city. Developer may submit pre-construction draw requests for a specified pre-construction development cost prior to issuance of the building permit for the private facility. And there will be no retainage on the pre-construction development costs. Developer acknowledges that the city and showbiz will be entering into a separate agreement regarding availability of parking spaces for use by showbiz in the future. And there's one other um, change to this amendment which indicates that no pre-construction pre draw request will be improved until the lease between the developer and Chobu Cinema is signed. So the staff recommends that the mayor and council authorize the city manager to execute the second amendment to Homestead Station Development Agreement. Any questions from council? This is a public hearing. I'll open the public hearing at this time. Anyone would like to speak for or against this resolution? You're welcome to come at this time. Any final comments from council? Is there a motion? Moved. Is there a second? Second. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilwoman Bailey? Yes. Councilman Roth? Yes. Councilwoman Fairclaw? Yes. Vice Mayor Shelley? Yes. Mayor Porter? Yes. The motion carries. Tab two. Mr. Attorney? Click again. There you go. Mr. Mayor, there's a resolution of the City of Homestead, Florida, approving the vacation of certain easements reserved to the city in resolutions R2017-08-76 and R2017-12-120, providing for an effective date. Mr. Manager. Mayor, by resolution R2017-0876, the City Council vacated the portion of Southwest 1st Street between Southwest 1st Avenue and Chrome Avenue and all of the alleys located between Southwest 1st Avenue, Chrome Avenue, and Railroad Avenue south of Southwest 320th Street and north of Northwest 2nd Street by resolution R2017-0877. 
2017-12-120, the city vacated a portion of Railroad Avenue, generally located east of Southwest 1st Avenue, west of Chrome Avenue, and north of Southwest 2nd Street. In both resolutions, the city reserved easements for public utilities over, across, and under portions of the right-of-ways vacated. The city has determined that the utility easements reserved by the resolutions are not needed and should be vacated. Staff has provided the public notice and mailed notice requirement by the city code. Resolution vacating the previously reserved easements will vacate all the easements except for the easement in the south five feet of the vacated 10-foot alley located south of the Homestead Station project. Staff recommends Mayor and Council approve the proposed resolution vacating certain utility easements that were reserved by resolutions R-2017-0876, adopted August 15, 2017, and R-2017-12-120, adopted December 20th, 2017. Always been anticipated for the project. This has always been anticipated. Yeah. Questions from council? This is a public hearing. You're welcome to speak for or against this resolution. Seeing none, close the public hearing. Any final comments? Are there, is there a motion? Second. Moved and seconded. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilwoman Fairclough? Yes. Councilwoman Bailey? Yes. Councilman Roth? Yes. Vice Mayor Shelley? Yeah. Mayor Porter? Yes. The motion carries. Tab three. Mr. Mayor, this is a resolution of the City Council of the City of Homestead, Florida, approving an amendment to the Agreement for Architectural and Engineering Services with DLR Group, Inc., to include additional services for the bidding or negotiating construction phases for the construction of the Cybrary for a total cost of $331,405, providing for implementation, providing for an effective date. Mr. Manager. Mayor, and thank you all for indulging us with these special calls on some of these items. As you know, for the big projects, we're headed towards uh, a March closing date, and so some of these things are needed to get us to the March date. This is one of those. In December 2016, the city entered into an agreement with DLR Group for preliminary design services for the Cyberry. See CAR 1980, attached as Exhibit 1. In February of 2017, the agreement with DLR was supplemented to include final design development for the Cyberry, including development for architecture, structural engineering, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, and plumbing engineering, but specifically excluded bidding and negotiation phase and construction phase services for the construction of the Cyberry. This new amendment will ensure that the architect, DLR, is involved in all phases of the construction, including pre-construction guaranteed maximum price negotiations, value engineering, review of contractor draw requests and submittals, responses to requests for information as well as architectural and engineering services throughout construction. Staff recommends Mayor and Council approve the attached resolution authorizing City Manager to amend the existing agreement with the DLR Group to include additional services for the bidding or negotiation and construction phases of construction of the Cyberry for a total cost of $331,405. The additional services are broken down into two parts. One, a $33,840 fee for bidding or negotiation phase services, and two, $297,565 for construction phase services to be invoiced on a lump sum percentage complete basis. Any questions from council? This is a public hearing. I'll open up the public hearing at this time. Anyone would like to speak for or against this resolution, you're welcome to come. Seeing none, close the public hearing. Any final comments? Is there a motion? Second. Is there a second? second. Moving to second. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilman Roth? Yes. Councilwoman Bailey? Yes. Councilwoman Fairclough? Yes. Vice Mayor Shelley? Yes. Mayor Porter? Yes. The motion carries. Tab four. Mr. Mayor, this is a resolution of the City Council of the City of Homestead, Florida, approving the terms of an agreement between the City and Showbiz Cinemas, LLC, providing for implementation, providing for an effective date. Mr. Manager. Mayor Gemma is going to Gemma do the report. Mayor, if I may, I'd like to direct um, Mayor and Council to Exhibit 1, the memo, and then pivot back to the recommendation. Exhibit 1, this is a memorandum. By resolution R2017-04-36, the City Council approved the execution and implementation of the Homestead Station Development Agreement with Axiom Construction. 
Under the terms of the agreement, Axiom is required to construct a structure of approximately 65,000 square feet that contains a 10 screen movie theater, 14 bowling lanes, video arcade, food service, and to enter into an agreement with Showbiz Cinemas LLC for 15 years. Showbiz has asked the city to guarantee that a certain number of parking spaces in the parking garage to be constructed by the developer for the city in accordance with the development agreement will be available for use by Showbiz for a period of 99 years after the ground lease expires or is terminated. By resolution R2017-12-125, the city council approved a term sheet for a tri-party agreement to be entered into by the city, Showbiz, and the developer addressing the guarantee of parking spaces after the expiration or termination of the ground lease. The city, showbiz, and developer have agreed that developer does not need to be party to the agreement and that the contemplated tri-party agreement should instead be a two-party agreement between the city and showbiz. The agreement in its entirety is attached as Exhibit 2. We pivot back to the recommendation on the cover of the car. Staff recommends that mayor and council approve the agreement between the city of Homestead and Showbiz Cinemas LLC. The agreement guarantees parking spaces to Showbiz and details the annual parking payment that Showbiz will pay to the city for the life of the agreement. It also includes Showbiz commitment for a continuous, a continuous operation obligation provision set forth in the Showbiz lease for a period of five years after issuance of a certificate of occupancy for Showbiz and the city's commitment that it will not provide direct financial subsidies to any new family entertainment businesses in Homestead for a period of five years after the issuance of a certificate of occupancy for showbiz. Any questions from council? This is a public hearing. Vice Mayor, if you want, if you want to say something, you just have to chime, chime in here, okay? This is a public hearing. I'll open up the public, right. I'll open up the public hearing at this time. Anyone would like to speak for or against this resolution, you're welcome to come. Seeing none, close the public hearing. Is there a motion? Is there a second? Moved and seconded. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilwoman Bailey? Yes. Councilwoman Fairclaw? Yes. Councilman Roth? Yes. Com Vice Mayor Shelley? Yes. Mayor Porter? Yes. The motion carries. Tab 5. Mr. Mayor, tab five is a resolution of the city of Homestead, Florida, approving the execution of a letter of commitment with Urban Research Park, CDE, LLC, approving the execution of a proposal letter with Capital One Bank, NA, authorizing the execution of documents, providing for an effective date. Report from staff, Gemma. Mayor. So I'd like to refer to exhibit one on this as well. Yeah, this is another one of the groups that have decided to invest in us, and so we thank you all for your help in, in convincing all these to have confidence in our downtown with that. Absolutely. Go ahead, Jim. The memorandum in Exhibit 1 references the letter of commitment for new market tax credits allocation from Urban Research Park CDE and the proposal letter for new markets tax credits investment from Capital One Bank. The City of Homestead is evaluating new markets tax credits financing to support the development of the city's innovative and state-of-the-art community cyber library facility, the Cybrary, and the Homestead Station projects. Urban Research Park CDE LLC has submitted a proposal to provide tax credit allocation to facilitate the new markets tax credits transaction and use of the tax credit incentive financing. Capital One NA has submitted a proposal to provide tax credit equity to support the Homestead Station tax credit incentive financing. This is the summary of the letter of terms from Urban Research Park. Urban Research Park CDE LLC will provide tax credit allocation of $8 million for the new markets tax credit transaction. There's a sub allocation fee of 580,000. There will be closing costs related to out of pocket expenses and professional fees of Urban Research Park CDE LLC. There will be ongoing compliance costs during eight years of 15,000 per year. The guarantee is to be provided by the city. There will be a 160,000 charitable donation to the local charity, a $30,000 deposit, which is refundable at closing. This is the legal deposit that all of the other CDEs have required. Their amount is 30,000 and it is refundable at closing. And there will be an outside closing date of this transaction of March 30th, 2018 and payment of construction monitoring costs. This memo then goes on to summarize the tax equity investment terms that are provided to the city by Capital One Bank NA. 
Capital One Bank has provided up to $4 million of qualified equity investment equal to $1,357,200 or 87 cents per tax credit dollar. The use of tax equity in conjunction with a leverage loan to support the financing to a special purpose entity created to lease, improve, and equip Homestead Station. Capital One NA will receive a pass through of tax credits for a seven year compliance period. There will be no upfront or ongoing fees, and there will be no ongoing compliance or serving costs. There will be a $75,000 credit provided by Capital One towards professional fees associated with the closing. There will be closing costs related to out-of-pocket expenses and professional fees of investor. The investment will be subject to a put call option to unwind the new market's tax credits transaction at the conclusion of a seven year compliance period. The tax equity supports the leverage loan new markets tax credit structure. There will be tax credit recapture indemnification and a $20,000 deposit for third party costs and professional fees. This is the same deposit that has been required on the other transactions and at the time of closing it can be repaid back with the new markets allocation and refunded to the city. The recommendation is that staff recommends that the mayor and council authorize the city manager to enter into the letter of commitment for the tax credit allocation from Urban Research Park CDE LLC facilitating the new market tax credits transaction in support of the Cybrae project and the proposal letter for the tax credit equity investment from Capital One Bank NA facilitating the new markets tax credits transaction in support of the Homestead Station project. Pivoting back to the recommendation on the cover page of the car, staff recommends that mayor and council authorize the city manager to approve the new markets tax credits allocation from Urban Research Park, URP, CDE, LLC, in support of the Homestead Cybrae in substantially the form attached. Authorize the city manager to approve the new market tax credits investment from Capital One in support of Homestead Station in substantially the form attached and approve the bridge loan term sheet for Homestead Station from Capital One and substantially the form attached. URP has offered to provide $8 million in allocation, which will provide approximately $1.4 million of funding subsidy for the Homestead Cybrae. That is the amount we get to take home, 1.4 of the eight. The legal deposit for URP is 30,000. Any questions from council? What's the What's the total number of tax, uh, new market tax credits that you have so far on this project? On the Cybrae, uh, the total number is 20 million. And on Homestead Station, the total number is 5 million. So some of this money is fungible. Um, and so it, it, it'll be used holistically for the project. But, right. the, but those the, numbers are gross. You want to just say net so that we don't, that's, it's not $20 million. Yes, that's the allocation. So the net uh, on the Cybrae is about 4.2. Um, it'll be determined at the time of closing based on the actual fees and the closing transaction fees. So it could range from between 4 million and 4.3 million. I think 4.2 is probably safe. And then for the Homestead Station, it's about a million take home. So total in both projects, It'll be between 5 and 5.3. We're getting there. We're getting there. That's the point. So we came out there with an empty basket and we came back with an excess of 5 million. So it's a very, it's a very convoluted process. It's, it's very hard for people to understand what's it's, going it's on. It's horrible. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, the net is you've got approximately $5 million that is coming from. We're hoping investment. closer to six almost closer to six, but anyway, at the end of the day, it's, it's investment in this project. Right. That's outside of the city's investment. So and it took, it, it took convincing national companies to, to invest. invest in our downtown and believe in, in, in what we're doing. And so far we have a bunch of groups that are willing to do that. And uh, while it's been hard, it is, um, we call it free money, but you know, the truth of the matter is, you know, that's something that we wouldn't have had unless we went out there pitching and thank you all for all the traveling and, the pitching that you've all done in one way or another to help us convince, because uh, that's that's money we wouldn't have had otherwise, and we didn't have to go to the taxpayers to get it. It it is free money, but it's also these companies look at this project as as a good investment, correct? Absolutely. So I mean, they wouldn't be doing this if we didn't have a good concept, didn't have a good plan, and a good strategy. So yes. 
Um, any, any questions from council? Any comments from council? This is a public hearing. I will open a public hearing at this time. You're welcome to speak for or against this resolution. Close the public hearing. Any final comments? Is there a motion? Is there a second? second. Moved and seconded. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilwoman Fairclough? Yes. Councilwoman Bailey? Yes. Councilman Roth? Yes. Vice Mayor Shelley? Yes. Mayor Porter? Yes. The motion carries. Tab six. Doing this thing. Mr. White? Yes, tab six is an ordinance of the City of Homestead, Florida, amending the city code. Ordinances by amending Chapter 30 zoning, Article 5, nonconforming uses by modifying the nonconforming use regulations to further clarify and amend the general purpose, applicability, and definitions related to nonconforming lots, uses, and structures, and further establishing Section 30 552, governmental right of way taking, providing for inclusion of the code, providing for severability, conflicts, and providing for an effective date. This is first reading. What he just said, I need somebody to explain it in English, because the way that the way that I understand this is, anyone that has property that has is taken from them by the government for some right of way acquisition, it gives them the ability to have a grandfather clause, if you want to call it, some sort of protection against being closed down because of the, of of the basically the government needing right of way. Is that was that what you just said? Well, what this ordinance does is it basically creates a section in the code which did not exist before. The non-conforming section of your code did not have any reference or um, any definitions or any guidance related to um, situations that occur when the government takes property. And so this, this section now creates a section that pertains to that very instance when there is a taking by, uh, by the government. Um, for right-of-way purposes, for example, um, and it lays out and it follows the county's regulations with respect to um, classification of nonconformities, um, which are a little bit more lenient under the new regulations for governmental takings than it would be for the nonconforming, the regular nonconforming section that you have in your code. Mr. Hennis, did you have something else you? you I can just read the car if you would like. Okay, go ahead, sir. Um, periodically, it is necessary to amend the city code of ordinances in order to update regulations and procedures to implement municipal goals and objectives. Modifications to Chapter 30 Zoning, Article 5, nonconforming lots, structures, and uses are necessary to clarify the general purpose, applicability, and definitions related to nonconforming lots, uses, and structures. Currently, the city code does not specifically reference or provide that nonconforming nonconformities created by a taking pursuant to lawful eminent domain proceedings are deemed to be legally established nonconformities. As such, the proposed city code amendments now incorporate reference and provide for such legal esta legally established nonconformities. Staff recommends that the mayor and council approve the proposed ordinance amending Chapter 30, Zoning, Article 5, Nonconforming Lots, Structures, and Uses. Sir, have questions from Council. Mr. Roth? Thank you, Mayor. Through the Mayor. Uh, James, how, I, how does this actually protect the property owners once a government agency takes over the property or does eminent domain? Um, what does it really mean? Is it, because in some cases, they'll lose parking spaces. Uh, they may use, lose some... Uh, some greenery or some aesthetic stuff along the thing that would come that would cause them to be in a non-conforming situation so for the purposes of maybe explaining to me how does it protect those folks now and in the future uh, wh what does this really mean so I'll I'm going to turn the mic over to my um, partner Pete so that he can um, you can explain this in the context of um, eminent domain. Every <clears throat> every one of these is sort of a case-by-case -case basis. is a little different, but generally I think you can help explain um, why we're doing this and the effect that it will have on property owners who are affected by um, eminent domain proceedings. Councilman, if I may, um, by way of example, um, if you have a property, say it's conforming as to its setback, 
and as a result of the taking and now lo no longer is conforming, without this ordinance, the property owner may have to do something as drastic as cutting and refacing their building. Now this ordinance will allow that property owner to continue to operate as they did um, without having to do something um, to bring the property conforming in this example to the setback. If the property owner, and it doesn't take away the property owner's ability to get damages as a result of a reduction in the value of their real estate. So for example, if the market would indicate, if you can find comps in the market in an eminent domain, you have to prove damages using actual market data. So if you can find comps in the market that would indicate um, that that property is worth less because it now has a non-conforming setback, that property owner will still be able to seek those damages, but will not have to do something as drastic under this example as cutting and refacing its building. Okay, so yeah, I think you said a lot there, and I'm still not entirely clear as to how it protects them. How does it protect the property owner? It, it, it protects the property owner by allowing them to continue to operate without having to do something um, that would be drastic if you did not have this provision. So, for example, and I'm not sure, James, what the front setback would be for, for commercial properties. Typically, it's... It's 25 feet. Okay, 20, it's 20 okay. feet. So say you have a property um, on the project that is conforming now as to its front setback to 20 feet. And their DOT's project takes the front 10 feet away. Without this code provision, that property owner may be made to do cut and reface the front of its building in order to be code compliant as to the 20 foot setback. Now, because of this ordinance, they won't have to do that. They'll be able to operate with the 10 foot setback. However, if the market would indicate that they're damaged, they'll still be able to get real estate damages. It's sort of the best of both worlds for them because now they don't have to do something that could potentially shut them down for a period of time, even though DOT would have to pay for them to do it. Um, yet, if there are actual damages in the market, they'll still be able to recover those damages. Okay, so then in the future, let's say the property owner sells their property. Yes. Would the new owner have to bring that property into conformity? No, unless they do renovations on the building or if somehow something happens to the building, um, which is more than what gains 50% of the value? Yeah, they, they would generally step into the shoes of their predecessor with respect to the 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 uh, non-conforming structure or building. And then if circumstances were such that they wanted to do remodeling or redevelopment of the property, then the then we have a substantial improvement rule that basically if you if you tip that that 50% then you have to basically come into compliance with the current codes. There could be instances where a new property owner might take it and then somewhere down the road, they would want to redevelop the property um, that may, may, may trigger having to comply with the code. But, but if they were just stepping into the shoes of the, their pre of the previous property owner in interest, all things would remain the same. Okay, so if a, if, a, if a current owner today sells it to someone in the future who buys it and does absolutely nothing to it, and let's say it's an automobile uh, mechanic shop, and all they do is sell the business to a new person, they come into the city to get their operating license, they're not going to be required to do anything at all to come into conformity. I think there's a provision that they stop using the building for a year, then they have to bring it into conformity. So if someone just stops using the, the property for a period of year, then they have to bring it into conformity. Okay, but just so, just so I understand. That could be true of the current property. No, I understand. But if a person walks in, buys a property from an existing business, does absolutely nothing at all, it's an insurance agency, he buys the man's insurance company, and 
comes to the city for a business license. He doesn't have to do anything to bring that building into conformity. That's, that's correct, unless they do renovations to the building. Well, if they do nothing at all, under your scenario, Councilman, no, they wouldn't. They, they're fine. They don't. No. There, there may be some situations. David, 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 come to the microphone so we can hear you. It's important. There may be some situations where a building has code violations or uh, have has had examples of where uh, landscaping has been destroyed and it hasn't. They have a site plan that's approved that has more landscaping on it, but due to diseased and landscaping uh, dying that hasn't been replaced, they would have to bring it up to the current approved site plan uh, in those cases, but in terms of having to do anything to push the building back or uh, anything of that nature, it wouldn't be impacted unless they were doing expansions and changes of the building. Okay, Okay. so aside from any potential code violations, uh, it may be some 40-year issues because we do have buildings that may fit into that category. I just want to make sure that the, the current property owners, if they want to sell their businesses, don't run into any issues with um, conformity issues because of this. We've had problems in the future, in the, in the past, where other administrations have passed certain things or did special exceptions, and then they go to sell their business, and they run into a whole lot of stuff where um, they can't do the transaction as they thought they could do. So I just want to make sure that if there's something here that is not, you know, advantageous or, or equal to the current property owners, that we're not doing something that's going to hurt them when they try to sell their business. That's, that's what I just want to make sure of. You know, I'm, I'm okay with doing I just want to make sure that the business owners that have property today don't have an issue selling them in the future because of this. Well, if, if it, it doesn't hurt them from a physical standpoint because whoever they sell it to, as is, is both James and David said, would be able to keep operating with that nonconformity. And if some, in certain situations, if the reduction of that setback or the creation of that nonconformity results in damages which can be quantified in the market and within the eminent domain cases of DOT's filing, they'll be able to get those damages. Right, and plus they'll, they'll be compensated up front for right. the eminent domain and, right. and whatever they need to do, the work they need to do. So I'll reserve until I, the, the, the public has a chance to speak as well. Thank you, Mayor. And it, this just doesn't apply to DOT. It applies to uh, any government, Miami-Dade County. Well, uh, Mayor, uh, we'll make the point that the way that this is drafted right now, um, there could be other areas in the city that would be added on in the future. But right now, this is limited to a specific area, which is the Campbell Drive US-1 Improvement Project, which we've described um, for that currently FDOT's doing with the Campbell Drive improvements. So um, it would only pertain to that segment, that particular project area that's identified. Um, it's not citywide, but in the future, you will could always add different areas to this. Well, you know, I mean, I think at this particular point, we all know the alternate route is going to go through Campbell Drive and there's some acquisition that has to take place. But at the same time, anyone that has um, any governmental entity that comes in and says it wants to take some of your property and then it forces you into a non-conforming use, basically forces you out of business. You know, this just gives you a tool in the bag to basically say it, you're grandfathered in. And and as long as, and the the time frame is, is in the code anyway. If you're dormant for 90 days, I think, any, any if, if anything is dormant for 90 days and it's a non-conforming use, you still have that problem anyway, regardless of this this ordinance as well. So, and I, and I would also point out that under the regular non-conforming provisions in the code, the trigger is 90 days. This actually gives a year. A year. So this is even more forgiving than the, the actual code that, that's in, is it existing. Correct. Okay. Any other questions from council right now? 
This is a public hearing. I'll open up the public hearing at this time. Anyone would like to speak for or against this resolution, you're welcome to come now. Seeing none, close the public hearing. Mr. Roth, anything? Okay. Mr. Vice Mayor, did you have anything? I, I haven't recognized you. No, I don't. All right, sir. Is there a motion on tab six? Okay. Is there a second? Yes. Moved and seconded. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilman Roth? Yes. Councilwoman Bailey? Yes. Councilwoman Fairclough? Yes. Vice Mayor Shelley? Yes. Mayor Porter? Yes. Motion carries. Is there a motion to adjourn? Moved and second. Roll call, Madam Clerk. All in favor. That's good enough. All right. I say we're going to, uh, Mr. Manager, the, what about the what about the executive session? Are we going to are we going that's done? Okay. So we're just we'll take about five minutes and go into the cow. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.